So now we understand that carbonyls are electrophilic. So what we're going to discuss now is uh, the chemistry of carbonyls in which we add nucleophiles. So nucleophilic addition to carbonyls. Okay, so just in general, what we're going to be discussing <coughs> are reactions of this type where we either take a, a nucleophile, an anionic nucleophile, um, or it can be a, a neutral nucleophile. Okay. We add these to a carbonyl of some type. Okay. And then we're going to get out a, a product, which is, if it's the anionic nucleophile, um, the intermediate will look like this, and then we'll have to uh, protonate in a separate workup to get to the neutral alcohol. Or if it's the, the neutral nucleophile, um, we will just add that um, a nucleophile H across the, um, across the carbonyl sort of directly, okay? So this is the general paradigm that we're going to be discussing um, and, uh, and so we'll talk about um, a number of, of instances of this type of chemistry. Now, uh, these nucleophiles can be um, quite, quite a range of things. So we can have things like hydroxide, alkoxide, hydride, um, we can have organometallics, uh, we can have things like cyanide ion, um, and then we can also have um, neutral species like water, alcohols, um, or amines. Okay, so we'll sort of discuss each of these in turn. Um, <clears throat> but we actually already uh, learned about two of these, although we didn't go into the mechanism um, in, in much detail. Um, we talked about, um, in our uh, discussion of the synthesis of alcohols, uh, we talked about how you can um, reduce alcohols with hydride. Okay. I reduce carbonyls to alcohols with hydride, um, or we can uh, add organometallic, so something like um, a, um, a Grignard or an organolithium uh, can add to a carbonyl. So after workup, we get to this type of species. Okay, so we've already discussed those. Um, we're going to we're going to uh, talk about um, a number of the other ones as well. Okay, so. In, in every specific case that we'll talk about, there's a, a given mechanism, but it turns out that um, all of these mechanisms um, follow the same sort of pattern. So um, what we're going to do here is just talk about the, the general pattern of these uh, mechanisms, um, and uh, you will see that uh, every other one we talk about sort of follows um, this general pattern. Um, and so before I talk about it, there's just two ways that we can uh, basically do an addition to a carbonyl one is a, a basic mechanism and the other is an acidic mechanism. Um, but before we talk about those, um, let's just uh, see what the problem would be if we tried to do this um, simply under neutral conditions. Okay? There's nothing necessarily infeasible about this. It's just it turns out to be a very high energy pathway. Um, and so it's not the one that we're going to follow. But let's just see what would happen if we took, uh, let's just say we'll just take an aldehyde. Okay. And we'll try to add um, some nucleophile uh, that's neutral, right? So this is not anionic and there's no, there's no acid around or anything, right? So let's say this nucleophile has a lone pair um, and we know the carbonyl is electrophilic. So maybe the nucleophile will add and we'll push up um, our electrons like that. So what do we get out of that first step here? Well, we get an intermediate that looks like this um, and you, know, you ask yourself well, how do you feel about this intermediate and and hopefully you see that that this is this doesn't look so great um, and the problem is is that we've taken two neutral species and and combine them to form a, a molecule that has both negative and positive charge All right so you know, it's, it's unfavorable to usually to form negative charge and it's unfavorable to form positive charge. But now we're asking um, two neutral molecules to, to form both of those things in the same molecule. So that's going to be very high in energy. Um, and if there was a way to, uh, you know, ha have this addition happen where you don't have to do that, it, it, you would expect it to be lower in energy. Um, and in fact, uh, we can do that either by 
uh, a basic pathway or an or a cationic pathway, uh, sorry, anionic pathway or a, or a cationic pathway, where we're only dealing with one of those charges all the way through. Okay, so in general, we're not going to do a neutral pathway, right? This is going to be uh, a high energy pathway that we're we're not going to do. Okay, so what does it look like if we if we change this and do this, um, say, under uh, a base regime? Right? So this is the 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 generic base uh, um, promoted addition to a nucleophile. Okay, so we'll we'll have our aldehyde again. And now we're going to, instead of having a neutral uh, nucleophile, we're going to have one that's already an anion, right? So this is already, we've already paid the price of having the anion, okay? So now if this um, nucleophile adds, right, we'll still add to the carbonyl, we'll push the electrons up. And what we will get out of this step is this intermediate, okay? So we've still formed that, that O minus. Uh, but now this looks a lot better than in the previous case because we <clears throat> we've just gone from anion to anion So we had we didn't have to develop um, Any more charge than already existed and we certainly didn't have to develop two opposite charges in the same molecule So this is good and then um, Now there's there's going to be two different uh, pathways to get to a neutral product if um, if we're doing this uh, under conditions where we actually have um, the, this anionic nucleophile in, uh, in the presence of its protonated version, um, what we'll do is just grab one of those protons and then that actually becomes catalytic in the base. Right, so there, <clears throat> there we go. And so we would regenerate the nucleophile that we originally added. So this would be something like sodium methoxide in methanol, right? We would both have access to methoxide anion and its conjugate acid, the, the methanol, right? Um, on the other hand, if it's something like a Grignard addition, this intermediate won't have any proton until we work it up with acid, right? So um, that last protonation step can, can occur in two different ways. But hopefully you can see why this base pathway is much lower in energy than the neutral pathway, right? So base, uh, sort of a base regime is a great way to do nucleophilic additions to carbonyls. All right, well, what about the, the acid pathway? This is also... A great accelerator uh, to to carbonyl additions, and so what we're going to do in this case, right? So we'll we'll have our carbonyl, um, but in this case we're going to have um, some some acid around, and I'll just represent it as H plus, but it it might actually take the form of H nucleophile, or it it, it very often will be H three O plus. Um, those details can change, but in general we're going to envision that there's a free proton, and and that the carbonyl can be protonated. So those lone pairs can be protonated. And if we do that, we get to this intermediate, uh, which you'll remember as an oxocarbenium ion. Um, and again, so we've, we've gone from a positive charge here on the proton to a positive oxocarbenium ion. So we, we're keeping the same charge all the way through, right? We didn't have to generate any new charge. Well, now at this point, this is a very electrophilic species. Carbonyls are electrophilic, but oxocarbeniums are, are massively electrophilic. And so now, in the presence of a neutral nucleophile, right, whatever it's going to be, um, even, though, even though as a neutral species it's not necessarily so nucleophilic, um, since this is so electrophilic, this addition can now happen quite readily. And that will then give us this intermediate. Okay, and now since we went from neutral uh, from a neutral species, now this has the positive charge, and to just end it all off, we need um, whatever base uh, we have around, oftentimes water or an alcohol. Um, we will just deprotonate, and that will then reveal our final neutral product, our nucleophilic addition product. <clears throat> okay. So you can see, again, in the, in the acid catalyzed, we're just dealing with, with cations all the way through. Um, and so we didn't have to generate um, new charge, and we, and we also didn't uh, have to generate opposite charges in the same molecule. So both base and um, acid are, are better pathways. Um, so one thing that is very important to keep in mind um, as we go forward and, and do these mechanisms uh, in different contexts is that 
uh, you, you know, you want to decide which regime you're in. If you're in the base regime, stay in the base regime and don't start to have cations in your intermediates, right? So don't start generating H plus or, or, or cationic species um, in, in the base regime. And if you're in the acid regime, uh, don't start generating things like hydroxide or, or spitting off anions because those aren't going to be viable intermediates in those conditions. Okay, so really just keep them separate um, when you're doing these uh, mechanisms. Um, but these are the generic uh, paradigms that you can apply to all the other chemistry we're going to talk about um, in terms of nucleophilic addition of carbonyls. Um, and I think you can you can sort of remember these as sort of uh, a, a mnemonic here. You, you have, um, in the base regime, you have add and then protonate so so add and then protonate so if you can just remember ap uh, for the base regime so you know you take your ap exam or or, or whatever whatever uh, little memory trick you want in the acid regime you're always going to protonate add and then deprotonate so so pad uh, you, you come up with some memory trick for pad um, and and you'll see that the mechanism for um, these processes always occurs um, in, in, in this sort of general pattern. So what we'll do next is to uh, start on the, the first example of an actual nucleophilic addition to a, um, a carbonyl, um, and we'll see how both of these uh, different regimes can apply.